Welcome to this satisfactory tutorial, where we will be delving into the new aluminium changes in Update 4. This tutorial will give you the information you need to set up a production line in providing you with 720 aluminium ingots. When Update 4 first hit on the experimental branch, the setup for aluminium was a fair bit simpler than it used to be back in Update 3 and 3.5, but alas, Coffee Stain decided that they had made it too simple and rebalanced it. Aluminium has always been one of the more complex operations to deal with in Satisfactory, and given my own pains with getting this setup right, I felt that this would be good tutorial material. In this tutorial I am covering the basic recipes, as those are the recipes that most people will be dealing with, but I will be making an additional tutorial for the alternate recipes so as to keep this tutorial short and to the point. What you need to pay attention to when dealing with the basic aluminium recipes is, as with most other things, the ratio. You will be working with a chain of four main production lines for the aluminium itself, not counting the raw material production buildings like miners and water extractors. And the four main production lines are refineries making alumina solution, refineries making aluminium scrap, constructors making silica, and foundries making aluminium ingots. Now looking at what these production lines require, you will additionally need to provide the following materials. Raw quartz for producing additional silica that needs to be fed into the aluminium ingot foundries, bauxite and water for the alumina solution, and coal for the aluminium scrap. So now that I have overloaded you with all of the things that you need, let's move on to how to do this in a manner that is hopefully understandable and useful to you. One annoyance with aluminium production is that water is a byproduct inside of the chain, and dealing with liquid byproducts can be challenging, so that is one of the primary things I feel is important to address in this tutorial. Looking at that, I found that for the purposes of this tutorial, I will be working with a ratio of 3 to 6 to 12, and there is no under or overclocking involved in the buildings inside of that ratio. I'm not going to cover the logistics of moving the external resources, like the additional silica you need, because that's something that you should decide upon yourself. Set that up the way that you feel is the best way to do, uh, and uh, whether that involves belts, trains or other means, that's all up to you, as long as you get the materials into your aluminium refinery. Now, a quick rundown of the production lines that you need, what they require, and what they produce. Silica production should be the very first thing that you set up before you start working on the refinery proper, because you need silica for the ingot smelting, and you need 600 silica to be produced outside of the refinery chain itself, which means that you're going to need 360 raw quartz that you will process into silica, where 16 of these constructors will produce exactly the 600 silica that you need. The next part of the setup is the alumina solution. For this, you will need six refineries. These six refineries will require 720 bauxite and 1080 water, and they will produce 720 alumina solution with 300 silica as a byproduct. Then we will move on to the aluminium scrap production. For this, you will need to build three refineries. These three refineries will use 720 alumina solution, and they will produce 1080 aluminium scrap with 360 water as a byproduct, and they also will require 360 coal. Now, the number 360 in the water production here, that's the key to why I felt that working with a 3 to 6 to 12 ratio is the easiest way to deal with your first aluminium setup, but I will get back to that. Now, finally, of course, you will need the foundries to actually smelt the aluminium ingots. You'll need 12 of these, and they will chug the 1080 aluminium scrap and the 900 silica, and they will end up with outputting 720 aluminium ingots. 
Now, that is of course all well and good. Now you know the numbers and so forth, but given that at the point that you are doing this for the first time, you probably only have access to Mark IV belts. Given that Mark V belts require alclad aluminium sheets to build, and that is one of the things that you are going to want to produce in this setup. So, next in this tutorial, I am also operating on the assumption that you have access to Mark II pipes. If you do not, you can get this to work, but you will have to work out how to split and merge the relevant pipes to provide the flow in the pipes that require more than 300 cubic meters of throughput yourself. With those things out of the way, let us move on to the detailed instructions for the build. The silica production I am not going to bother covering in depth. It's a simple and easy enough setup, requiring only a miner or two, providing the raw quartz, and then you need to build the 16 constructors and set them up to make silica and move the silica to where you need it. The alumina solution and aluminium scrap refineries, however, those are a different story. The pipes involving these refineries need to be built with some care, because as mentioned earlier, the aim with this build is to avoid the entire production line shutting down because of water backlogging in the refineries, producing aluminium scrap. And they will provide you with a reliable throughput of 720 aluminium ingots. As mentioned, the fact that the six refineries producing aluminium scrap in this build leaves you with 360 water as a byproduct is the key to this build. The reason for this is that each refinery producing alumina solution requires 180 water, and the 120 water produced uh, by those refineries uh, each, uh, multiplied by 3, is 360. Now, this should come as a major knowledge bomb to all of you, but I am very happy to be able to tell you this. This mysterious number 360 divided by 2 equals 180. So, we take that 360 water coming out of the three refineries producing aluminium scrap and then we combine that into one pipe and connect up that pipe to two of the six refineries producing alumina solution. That pipe will be an isolated pipe, and you need to connect the other four refineries to water extractors providing the 780 water those require. I will leave it up to you how you want to connect uh, the pipes to those. Just do take care to not connect the pipes from the water extractor uh, network to the pipes running water from the refineries. They absolutely must be two separate pipelines. And also note that the two refineries connected to the isolated network will initially start up a couple of minutes later than the other four because the scrap refineries must start to produce the water that goes into that isolated loop before those original refineries can start their production. Now, the build that I have been showing on my screen here is using the alternate recipes for the aluminium production, but I decided that setting up an example refinery for the basic build would be both too time consuming and, well, uh, it's basically the same principle that applies to both of the builds. So, this uh, pipeline you see here going in a circle, uh, that's the uh, uh, isolated loop uh, in my refinery setup. And uh, the principle, as I mentioned, it's the same for the basic recipes as it is for the alternate recipes. Uh, so this, this is a circle of pipes, I'll get back to it. With the uh, basic uh, recipe, you can use Mark 1 pipes for this, uh, if you choose to do the same uh, circular loop that uh, I have done here. My electrode aluminium scrap refineries are producing 1050 water as a byproduct, uh, but by having the water flowing both directions and then meeting up over at the refineries that input them, uh, the pipes do not become a bottleneck in this refinery. However, by using Mark II pipes in the build that this tutorial covers, you do not need to build this circle. You can just drag one pipe from the aluminium scrap, scrap refineries and just drag it over to the uh, two refineries that need the water from that. Now, there is also the alumina solution, of which we are producing 720. Uh, to have both a clean look, but also the easiest time setting up the pipes for that, I recommend using this loop and you also would need to use Mark II pipes there because uh, 
you want the water to go in a circle, so the, or the alumina solution I mean, to go in a circle so that it balances out. Where you want the pipes to be, and whether you want to use stackable conveyor poles above ground or, or above floor, or you want to take the pipes down underneath, having, um, having them on a subfloor like this, that's up to you. The main point is, you need to connect up the pipes on the outputs of each of the six alumina solution refineries, and you need to combine that into one Mark II pipe that you then have going in a circle that meets up at both ends behind the refineries, producing your aluminium scrap. Then you connect the pipe to the pipe inputs of those three refineries, and since the alumina solution is foaming in from flowing in from both sides, you will not bottleneck the pipes <clears throat> with the max throughput of 600 cubic meters that a Mark II pipe is limited to. The refineries will get the alumina solution from both sides, and the end result will be that the pipeline balances out, and effectively providing you with a much higher throughput than just running a pipe from A to B. Very possibly providing a throughput of up to 1200 cubic meters, but I haven't done the math on that, so take that with a grain of salt. Finally, since I'm going by the assumption that you only have Mark IV belts available to you at the time you are setting this up, you will have to take care with how you build the belts, because you do not want to bottleneck those either. Now let's do a quick rundown of how I would uh, set up the belts, given that a Mark IV belt can have a maximum throughput of 480 items. You're going to be have a production of 900 silica, of which you'll get 300 from the alumina solution refineries. You're also going to be having 12 foundries that will smelt down that silica together with the scrap into aluminium ingots. And since 900 divided by 3, another knowledge bump, equals 300, that provides us with an easy calculation where you can divide 12 foundries into three groups of four. AKA, three Mark IV belts of silica, each with 300 on them, running to three sets of four foundries each. As for the aluminium scrap, one belt per uh, refinery making scrap carrying 360 and then you can see what I have done here uh, I have 3000 aluminium scrap being produced in this refinery and I've set up the, the belts in layers five of them as shown and each belt connects to two refineries each set to the electrode aluminium scrap recipe that means that they are each getting 600 aluminium scrap per belt. So those go out on these pairs and they carry 600 aluminium scrap into 10 smelters each in this line of 50 smelters with 25 smelters on each side using the pure aluminium ingot recipe. Now, when you are done building your setup using the basic recipes and you have those 720 aluminium ingots being smelted per minute in your foundries, you need to figure out how to split those 720 aluminium ingots into production lines, making alclad aluminium sheets and aluminium casings. My recommendation would be four assemblers making 120 alclad aluminium sheets per minute. Note, those will require 10 copper ingots each, so you'll need 40 copper ingots in that production, in addition to the 120 aluminium ingots. And then you can use the uh, spare 600 aluminium ingots to make aluminium casings, since you will need a lot more of those than you will need of the sheets. This means 7 constructors, and you will have to underclock one of them to the production target of 40, or 66.8. 60, 60, uh, 6, 6, 6, 6 percent on the clock speed. That production line will give you a total of 400 aluminium casings. And with that, I believe I've covered what you need to set up your first aluminium refinery using the basic recipes. And I do realize that the best thing that I could have done would have been to actually build the setup so that you guys could see it on camera, but time constraints are prohibiting me from doing so right now. So I hope that this tutorial at least provides enough information that you're able to set it up based on my instructions here. However, what I did do is I set up a spreadsheet in uh, Google Sheets, and I will be showing that on screen now. And hopefully this will help you. Uh, 
These are the six refineries making the alumina solution. These are the three refineries making the aluminium scrap. And these are the 12 foundries making aluminium ingots. These two are the uh, refineries making alumina solution that are inside of the enclosed loop that takes the water coming from these three aluminium scrap refineries and inputs them into these two. And it is uh, a one to one uh, ratio here. So the production, the produced water is exactly what these need to produce the solution. And then it goes back. The other four require 700 water coming from the extractors. And again, don't connect them. Then you have the ring that I mentioned. This is the alumina solution loop. So as long as it goes out on both sides, it's not a problem that it's 720 going in the pipe because the alumina solution will be coming in from both sides and it will even out. Next, we have the silica, which is on these purple lines here. These are belts, or trying to represent belts. So from the six refineries, you have four foundries getting from that. You have another belt with 300 supplying the other four foundries here and a third belt with 300 supplying the last line of foundries and then of course each of these aluminium scrap refineries are producing enough scrap to provide for four foundries each in this and i just made an example here where i had 360 aluminium ingots coming from two groups of six foundries each you find if you figure out yourself how you want to split up and merge those foundries together hopefully that helps i will be publishing another tutorial uh, with the uh, alternate recipe which is what i have built here or rather the alternate recipe setup uh, i do consider the alternate recipes uh, better than using the basic recipes, um, but you are kind of dependent upon having Mark V belts for the ultimate recipe ones, and uh, it's a little bit more work as well. However, if you have any questions or comments, then please do feel free to leave them in the comment sections below the video, and also, if you would like some more in-depth discussion regarding the tutorial, the build, satisfactory in general, or you just want to join a nice and friendly community, then please also consider joining my community Discord server, for which you'll find the link in the description of the video. I also regularly stream over at Twitch, and uh, you'll find the link for that in the description as well. Thank you all so very much for joining me, and I will see you all next time.